Hi, today we are going to talk about how to effectively engage ground targets in Mirage F1. Since it doesn't have computerized aiming sights or weapon release cues, all the targeting relies on skill of the pilot. Once mastered, it is very satisfying and actually it improves aiming with CCIP peepers in more modern jets. The trick is to release weapons while at the correct speed, altitude and pitch angle in relation to the target. The profiles I'm going to demonstrate, if flown correctly, put the plane in a perfect position for an accurate release, as well as serve different purposes with regards to target and air defenses. Before we start, there are three important points to cover. The first one is, all the altitudes you see are above ground level with relation to target's location. In this video, the target was sitting at about 5000 feet above sea level. You can either adjust the left altimeter to show the above target value and use it as a stand-in for a radar altimeter, or you can do the math on the fly. Since F1's altimeter can't fully compensate for such big difference, here I am using the second method, as well as a hybrid of them both. The second point is how to obtain distance to target. INS coordinates are the best, but Takan radial or distinctive terrain feature you can fly over will work as well. F10 map and its ruler function are helpful here. The third point is, regardless of your proficiency, be prepared to use multiple bombs or rockets on a single pass to compensate for the inherent lack of precision and post-launch guidance. Think of it as of a shotgun rather than a sniper rifle. The high altitude bomb profile is used for targets defended by manpads. Here I have Igla waiting for me. Preemptive flaring is a must and it works well. This profile is heavily inspired by one of the lessons in a free training campaign, Fighter Weapons School. Link in the description below. I am looking at the target below. That's there, the red dot. I'm looking at the distance, 4.3. I wing over in advance to intercept 4.0 along with the target azimuth. Stabilizing the target azimuth, intercept minus 40 degrees of pitch. Now I'm looking at the airspeed, target is 500 knots. I'm going to reduce throttle in advance, not to overshoot the, the speed. 15,000 feet, pickle, and I'm preferring. There goes Iglam, defined smoke line. And bombs on target. The medium altitude bomb profile is used for targets defended by point triple A like for example Ashilka, which is our target here. Also, it is preferred profile for walking with forward air controller, as it allows you to silker overhead and identify described battlefield features. Entry parameters are good, target appears behind the canopy bow, wing over, this is decisive pull, but not too much, stabilizing the target's azimuth, intercept proper dive angle, I am watching speed, Reducing throttle, not to overshoot it. Correct altitude, pickle, a little bit late actually, pull up. Bombs are a little bit long, but still a direct hit on Shilka. The pop-up bomb profile is needed for dealing with long-range air defenses, as it allows to close in with the help of terrain masking and flying under the effective radar coverage. Here, I have an active SA-6 site to deal with, and the final pop-up allows for targeting a specific component, which is radar. Low approach towards the live SA6 site, I'm looking at the distance, 4.0 afterburner, 3.5, turn left or right, about 30-40 degrees, then pull up 40 degrees, watch the target, watch the altitude, 3000 feet above the altitude, wing over to the target, moderate pull, as required, to align with the target azimuth and correct uh, dive angle while at the correct altitude and the people over the target pickle and of the target radar is hit high drag bombs are best suited for surprise attacks on linear targets for example aircraft parked on the ramp or forward line of troops this profile has the same advantages as the pop-up However, selecting find your target is more difficult and your selection of attack headings more limited. Here the most important is correct speed and altitude above the ground, which are fine here, slight corrections, azimuth to the target looks good, small corrections as well, pickle, 
And bombs on target. Durandal, in a way, is a type of high drag bomb, designed specially for attacking runways. Remember to cut the runway diagonally so that its entire width is unusable for any landing attempts. Two planes cutting in different parts is even better. Diagonal approach, similar to high drag bombs, pickle once the runway touches the lower edge of the HUD, and bombs on target. And a short picture of BDA here. Rockets are the most flexible and equally the most underappreciated weapon. You can use them for point attack or strafe the whole line. You can perform surprise low level strike or more deliberate diving run. And you can change it on the fly as required. Also, you can load different types of rockets into subsequent launchers to create combined effect munitions of some sort. One more attack on live SA6 side. I'm looking at the distance. It will be different than with the bombs, 3.5 miles, and its turn and afterburner at the same time. Again, 40 degrees pitch up. I'm rolling over a little bit to see the target. Good altitude, wing over. Hard pull. Intercept. Pitch angle as he moves to the target. And fire away. Radar is gone. The internal gun and gun pods are similar in their use to rockets. The main difference is you have to get closer, but in exchange you can take advantage of superb accuracy, which can bring multiple 30mm rounds on target in a single pass. You can combine bombs or rockets with guns, use the former for taking out the defenses or a SAM side radar, and use the later to finish off the trucks or launchers, if you have the battle space to do so. For the most of the time, it should be one pass, whole ass. Guns are the best, but you don't really need A10 for that. I'm looking at the distance, 2.0 miles, wing over to the target, moderate pull as required to align the peeper at the correct dive angle with the target, one second burst, then pull up to avoid the ground, and turn to the side to clear any ricochets. Rounds on target. Last but not least, you can drop laser guided bombs on targets, which are designated by another air or ground unit. Depending on the quality of air defenses in the area, you can use diving profiles described before, or you can perform a level drop according to this table, as long as you have the coordinates of the target. Alternatively, you can fly in close formation with the designating aircraft, who will use its own bombing cues to tell you when to pickle. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.